also we just passed the cremation and I passed it on the way to the cave um, and got like the full face of smoke of the body burning and it was still a uh, still that yummy body smoke so it's a beautiful tradition I didn't have a butt. It was just because I had so much back fat. Now that I've lost some of the back fat, I definitely have an ass. And it gets stuck. Good morning, friends. I'm Steph, welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, then you know who I am and you know that I'm excited today because we're going on a motorbike adventure. <gasps> what do we have today? We have the Honda Click 125. No, this isn't the Click. This is the Wave 125i. Ooh. This literally might be the finest motorbike in all of Long Prabang available for me to rent. Um, because there are like 225 or 250 uh, like Honda dirt bikes, but they're so expensive. Um, and I am gonna be covering about a thousand kilometers in five days. So 600 miles in five days, mostly off-road, uh, mostly in the mountains. We're gonna go have a loud adventure, kids. Let's go. Uh, so the goal for this morning, we have about 175 kilometers to cover. There is a waterfall on the way. We might stop at that. Uh, I want to get to the hotel, stash the bike, stash the bags, because they have really, really cool caves there. And that's where we're going, is to see those amazing caves. Um, I'm going to put the little Cheapo Guest GoPro on my chest so you guys can see some motorbike stuff. Um, I've got my trauma kit ready to go. Um, I always carry like the trauma kit when I'm riding my motorcycle at home, just because I have... I'm, trained EMT so if I need to help other people it's always good to have but more like I'm thinking more here of helping myself because I will be kind of rural if you have a tourniquet you have stuff you can help yourself a lot with some very basic equipment so I encourage anybody that rides motorcycles anywhere that you're away from other people learn how to use a tourniquet and carry one with you especially here like it could mean the difference of losing your life or just losing your leg and I'd rather lose my leg than my life I think but we're not gonna lose any of those today I've got a decent helmet I've got my gloves. I'm so excited we're gonna go. I have to remember to drive on the right because it feels like I'm in Thailand. So I want to drive on the left, but I'm in Laos and I need to drive on the right. Okay, drive on the right, drive on the right, drive on the right. We're gonna go, it's gonna be so fun. made the big trip to uh, Nong Khoai. So it, was, it wasn't so bad, the riding was good. Um, I'm not gonna get a thousand kilometers in five days though. Like these roads and the 125 cc bike, they just don't work that way. Um, so I dropped my bag at the hotel, I had a little something to eat. This wonderful young gentleman over here um, will be watching my motorbike for the princely sum of uh, 20,000 kip. But that's all right, I would like for him and his family to make a little money to watch my motorbike. And he does have a knife. So I told him anybody tries to steal it, I want him to cut them. Here's the cake. Pa Kwong Cave. Pa Kwong Cave was originally used as a refuge during the Indochina War in the 1960s. So when uh, the Americans started dropping bombs, uh, people from Nong Kwai could come and hide in the cave. I don't know how deep we'll go in, it is quite deep. I'm alone, but the kid knows I'm here. Oh, maybe this guy's gonna come with you. Are you gonna come with me, buddy? All right, let's go. Isn't it kind of like awkward? filming yourself like climbing up these stairs because all you're gonna hear on the mic is just me being out of breath, so I'll save you from that, okay? Ooh, a little steep. Wow. 
I think this is the biggest cave we've visited on this trip so far. I say we, I mean you and me. I don't think I'm more than one person. <laughs> but look at artifacts from when people lived here. And maybe a little shred. But that's the thing, people spent a decade hiding in these caves. When the bomb started dropping, it was indiscriminate. Um, the US secret war lasted for over a decade. They dropped the equivalent of, for inflation, $4 million of bombs per day for like 12 years and killed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of innocent civilian Laotians in the process. Um, and almost every day still in Laos, somebody is dying from the unexploded ordinance as well. So the people that came in here, came in here because they feared for their lives, because their villages were getting bombed, their fields were getting bombed, their children were dying. They did what they had to do. They came and lived in the caves. Hey, it's your friend, awesome, cool stuff with a backwards hat and a light. Anyway, here's some stuff. <laughs> um, so these are artifacts that were found in the cave from the secret war time. Aluminum cans, obviously lots of statues of Buddha and other things people would want uh, to be comforted during their time in the cave and they'd want their religious iconography with them, of course. I don't want to use too much of the light though because I don't want to waste it. Let's get this view over here. Bunch of other artifacts. So this is a gunning position, you think? Oh yeah, it is. It definitely is. Um, so the signage out says, outside said that these were civilians, but heavy weaponry would state otherwise, but anyway, you'd have somebody guarding the front gate, of course. You'd have somebody doing it. But this is a, like a heavy machine gun thing. I think you put a machine on there, and a gun on there, and then all the bullets. And these are just cases too, these are full, these are live, or I don't know how live they are, but. Oh, this is an RPG thing, I think. As is this. And is that like a landmine? That's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> Shit. I can imagine being in here, being so scared. Yeah. And having the gunnery position just in case somebody was coming. And a little bit of life too, because, because Jeff Goldblum, what? Life finds a way. It finds a way. All right, let's go get dark. I do know that the cave, there's a lot of like squeeze spots and where I'm alone and I'm a big kid and I got a backpack, we're probably gonna have to turn around sooner than later, but that's okay. I don't wanna go get stuck in a cave. This is the best Buddha I've ever seen. I love him. I love all Buddha, sorry. Tons more stuff. More bullets. So some that are just shells too. Obviously anything we'll find on the ground catches our eye, we can put in the nearest pile.
some more artifacts up here. I've got the little light on the GoPro and I've got my headlamp, so if that's going to make you nauseous, sorry. Alright, let's go. Oh, it stinks already. And I can hear bats. Oh, it's very, very damp. The air is real thick. Some artifacts, some top stuck hands, little Buddhas. Oh yeah, there's tin tops everywhere here. I got a soda, or not a soda, like an electrolyte drink yesterday. Um, and I had a pull tab on it. I hadn't seen one of those, I think, since I was a little kid. All right, so there was infrastructure in here. You see, there's tons of bricks. There's bricks, there's lots of wood. So they definitely had stuff set up. I mean, they would have had communications and stuff, I'm sure. Oh, this still has quite a bit of detail left to it. Make sure it gets back up there. Oh yeah, these are all Buddhas. They need to come back up. They can't stay on the ground. The Buddha pieces. first chamber. So we've come in here, we went all the way through here, and now we're here. I think this is the squeeze. I don't know that I'm going to be able to make it through there. So. But let's check out this cavern a little more. Alright, I'm gonna give it a go. You only live once, right? But, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna save myself the, um, the humiliation of trying to bring you with me while I do it. So, if we make it to the other side, we'll catch back up then. I didn't die. I made it. Let's go. Put your light back on. Here, now you can see. is three o'clock now so probably only gonna go for half an hour or so hello cave spider you're very cool That's the squeeze, but that's not gonna happen. Oh yeah, kids, I think. I don't know. I don't think it's gonna happen. Okay. 
What do you guys think? <laughs> Can I make it? I don't know. I don't think so. Nope. I don't think so. I think this is where we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. It's kind of a shame because I did want to make it all the way back and like I could fit through it, but if I'm alone, it's even if I had just one other person, like a lay person that wasn't a cave rescuer, I think I'd be able to slip through, but I'm not gonna do it by myself. Oh, that's plastic. It's from somebody like me's bag. Fire pit, maybe. Yeah, a little burning here, too. Baby cave spider. Found a rabbit brand, what, Diva battery? I think it's old. And some Chinese tape. <laughs> and lots of little things that people have left behind. Some more batteries. Oh yeah, these are definitely old. Look at all the uh, corrosion. And is this a, no, it's a cigarette, but I thought it was a 22 case. This goes with the batteries, so let's stack them up here. Where the other ones go? There, put them there. Way nobody steps on them and we can maintain our history or not our history but the people who lived in this cave's history which is our collective human history as well even if it, it was my uh, grandparents that were spending the tax money to blow up the people's villages <laughs> so it is a shared history and i i laugh there out of just absurdness not because it's funny Or battery cases. Oh, there's tons of them. They must have, this must have been like a uh, communications area or something where they needed a lot of batteries just to be well lit. These look quite soft. Our tins. Look like where it's corroded, it must be like iron because it really is just. And that's the cave, the cave just falls apart. Look at that, jeez Louise. I'm not trying to break you, cave. I'm sorry, <laughs> they don't make more, it's regenerating. Let's have a better look over here than we did before. Oh, ampules. Medicine ampules. So this would have held uh, medication. You pop off the top like this. Um, it's how a lot of meds are still packaged here in Southeast Asia. So when I used to get 
uh, veterinary medications for the dogs in Thailand. It used to be like that. And then I was at the hospital the other day with a gentleman um, who had gotten hurt. And we went to the Lao hospital and they were using ampules for the uh, tetanus vaccine even. I'm so sorry for the heavy breathing. It's quite hot in here. Oh, that's cool. So that might have been like top to a, a jar. So maybe this could have been like a little medical area. Some wood, more glass. So I think this little grouping here of the ampules and the, what I'm calling the cake, you know, the top to the, the jar holding the cotton next to the shells, which is, this isn't a shell, this is a live round, I believe, because it's heavy. So, you have intense wartime activities. You have that, that big machine gun thing outside. You have all these rounds, all these unspent rounds, all these spent rounds. You have people that are needing emergency medicine, and you have people that are praying for their lives to their Buddha statues too. It's nobody wins in war. And when it's so incredibly one-sided uh, that we spent billions of dollars bombing this country back in time <laughs> that America did. I, I didn't do it, you didn't do it, but you know, somebody did. And this is heartbreaking because it's the human lives. It's, it's not just numbers. And it's one thing when we talk maybe about like just as an example, and I'm not talking about scale, I'm not talking about anything, I'm talking about like well-known human tragedy on this scale, on a scale of a million people. So like think about the Holocaust or any other genocide. We think of that and it's, it's real and those are real people and those are real numbers. But this secret war, all these people were killed in secret and the United States didn't release any information about it until Bill Clinton unclassified the files and they're still not all unclassified. So the things that the American military and the American CIA did in this country are completely unforgivable. Um, and President Obama was here a few years ago and he acknowledged that the United States had done this to Lao, but he did not apologize. And he said that they were pledging $4 million a year to clean up the unexploded ordinance, which the Laotian people and the government were happy to have. But then you think it was over a decade, it was $4 million of bombs per day. And now the United States, the richest country in the world, did that. And is now spending $4 million a year to pick the bombs that didn't explode back up. And that's... That's not enough for me as an American taxpayer, somebody that likes paying taxes. I like paying taxes because we need that. We're part of a community and the uh, United States has a lot of problems, but it's still a really great place to live. And I wanna support that, but ooh, <laughs> a lot more could be done, I think. You're very pretty, cave thing. Do you buy it? I'm not going to find out. This looks like ceramic. Oh, no, it's glass. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's glass filled with it. Oh, is this a tool? Is this a little axe? I think it is. Or a, um, a hoe? Probably a hoe. A hoe for show. Cool. Put it there. All right, and we're back. Man, dead end. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's just a cubby hole full of glass. So I'm not gonna get down on my belly. But again, the cave's just falling apart. It's very slippery. I don't want to sleep. A little fitting. Yeah, lots more small glass like ampules. Yeah. Bottle top. Medicine or booze? I don't know. <clears throat> so now we're back to the part that had all the brick building in it. Oh shit. Is that a buffalo horn? It is. Holy shit, look at that. Water buffalo horns. Or cows, but. <laughs> That's amazing. That's beautiful. Put them up like this. So whoever else comes in can appreciate them. More brackets. Yeah, so where all the wood is here, or the, the brick, well, you can see right here. It had been walled up. So there had been sections put in, different rooms. Like a gilded, what's oh, Buddha? It's a beautiful gilded Buddha. We have to find some place better for him than in the dirt. Here's the other part. Oh, and that's gilded as well. Let's put them up here. And a lot more of those ampule bottles too. I reckon the um all the, the cases and the shells maybe got found and placed out of the way because somebody came in with a metal detector. I'm sure they cleared it for uh, anything that was gonna really blow up on people. This chuck a block full of nails here. So always when you're in a place like this, never take anything. Don't be an idiot, okay? Don't be an asshole. Whatever's here exists in its place, in its context, so that in 20 years, if there's ever the resources and, you know, the money, the time, the people to come in and do a proper study about mapping the cave out, you want stuff pretty much where it was. So that's why I'm just leaving things kind of in the general vicinity that I find them, but kind of grouped so that other people can see them. the crystallization of the calcification. Fucking hell. That's so cool. It looks like, I mean, you know, it looks like a biological organic. It feels like a, it should belong in a fish's mouth. Texturally, that's very, very interesting. Wow. Oh, and it go, that goes all the way here. 
Oh shucks. Look at that. That is so cool. So this is guano here. So this must be where the bathroom's just here. I reckon up there. Because this is really the only place that I smelt them and this is the only place I'm seeing guano. Maybe pythons. Pythons with bats. So many bullets. Singing a song so it's not so sad. But then my singing's gonna make everyone even sadder. Bum, bum. Yeah, we woke the bats up. There are a couple gentlemen here that are seeing to the altar, to the shrine that's still in the cave, and they are practicing their religion. So we're not gonna include them in our video, right? Cause that, they don't come here to practice their religion to be in our video. I found a snake skin. Well, a piece of a snake skin. Oh, cute. Super, super cute. I was saying with the bats, maybe they were pythons, but this is just a teeny tiny snake. I think it's old because it's really dry. Are there more pieces of it? This might have been like, because snakes, you know, they, they have to get all the shed off and it doesn't always come off in one piece. So sometimes they have to scratch and I wonder if that's what they were doing. They were scratching at the rocks trying to get... Oh, there's a big bee on me. Please go away, big bee. I don't want to get stung in the cave. I don't think you can make it out too well, but the river's just there and the cliffs are on the other side and this is an incredibly beautiful place. Um, I've never been to rural Lao before. I've been to Vientiane, the capital, many, many, many times because I used to do visa runs. Um, and I'd been to Vieng Vien because that's where you go um, to party a little bit. Um, but I'd never been elsewhere in Lao and it's so incredibly beautiful and chill and quiet and I like it very much so far. Um, and this was an amazing experience uh, to be able to come here and experience just a, just a little smidge, just a little teeny tiny bit of what people would have dealt with. Just, but, and obviously, I'm not getting bombed. I'm going back to my very comfortable guest house uh, where I'm gonna eat and relax and, and edit a video for you on my computer. So completely different circumstances, but it's always good to Learn about the past. So, Bethany Hughes says that um, even if you learn about the past, you, you, it's not history doesn't repeat itself, or history is not doomed to repeat itself. But it keep happening, man. We just keep people keep like hurting other people real bad, and it's real bad. So, thank you so much for coming with me. We're gonna hit up a couple more caves in the next couple of days where similar things happened um, that also have artifacts. So I think there's two more in the area. Maybe we'll, I'll probably hit up both, but I'll film one of them for you guys. Uh, and then we've got a bunch more stuff on the secret war just because I'm in the area um, and I wanna learn more about it because I don't know that much about it. So if I'm gonna go and learn, then you should too. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. It's been super fun. Um, it's beautiful and I will shoot you some beautiful B-roll footage so you can watch and cleanse, a cleansing B-roll footage of, there's a puppy down there that I pet already. I'm gonna get some footage of that puppy, some beautiful scenery, it was gonna be wonderful. So thank you guys so much. I love you. So yeah, beautiful river. There, kids are swimming over there and I'm not gonna film swimming kids because that's weird. But the river is just here. Look at that. My god. And you can hear a long-tailed bird over there. I wanna, um, I think I'm gonna hire a boat tonight. A boat and a driver, obviously. I wanna, I wanna come have a little cruise around here. I think it'll be worth the money. I don't think it'll be cheap, but I think it'll be worth it. Ooh. Almost one of the most beautiful places I have ever been. Without filming the naked children. No naked children, stay off of my film. Because I don't have a clutch. Because it's a semi-automatic, yeah, big deal, ever heard of it? Mm. 
it still shifts, but there's no clutch. I, it, and it shifts like this. At any rate, my left hand is free, so uh, maybe uh, you guys can see some good GoPro bike footage. I'm gonna give it a try. Even though I'm always afraid of dropping you or smashing you or the water buffalo getting you again. This is the best feeling in the world. If you've never experienced it, driving a motorbike in the sunshine is the best. Just thought I'd reiterate that for you. Super cute! Little bungalow. Right on the river. Uh, and that beautiful bridge that we drove over a couple times is over there. So, location, 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 my guys. But also, this is the type of house that I would live in if I could build a house and live in. I would have like an acre and it's all fenced since so my dogs can't run away and then I plant some stuff and like ooh, ooh. But at any rate my bungalow seven dollars a night seven USD with a western toilet and a water heater luxury ever heard of it and a skeeter net which is important because we're right next to the river oh, I sleep so well in places like this 